appreciate. I'm sure you understand just what I mean. Everybody everywhere is calling for her now. I'm speaking of the new Ford, and boy, it's sure a wow. Lay off people, lay off folks, none of your sarcastic jokes. Henry's made a lady out of Lizzie. Not a rattle, not a bit. Lizzie now has lots of it. Henry's made a lady out of Lizzie. There's everything inside her now except a kitchen sink. A mirror and a powder puff, a shower bath, I think. I'll bet my life. On to Vern and Kimberly Shirk. Come on up. In some of the surveys that we've had in the past, one of the things on there was, you know, we'd just like to hear something about uh, some of maybe the common stuff. Uh, when you get done, you'll find out, I don't know a lot more than you do. I've just been around it a while. One of the things we haven't really talked about is like the, the brakes and adjusting for a free neutral. I've been around a lot of different Model Ts and, and watched them on tours. And uh, some of the things I've noticed about emergency brakes uh, over time is you, sometimes your emergency brake lever won't stay put. It'll jump forward on you or something. Uh, the brake lever goes back too far maybe and hits the front of the seat. Uh, you pull the brake lever back and still don't have any brakes, <laughs> uh, emergency brakes. Uh, car won't go into high gear. Uh, the brake rods rattle. Uh, that's kind of an easy fix. And uh, scraping sound from the rear brakes. And uh, Okay, so we're going to start at the rear axle and move forwards. I hope we kind of get to cover some of the topics that comes up on the forum now and then. And one of them is about the, the rear end and the thrust washers, the Babbitt thrust washers. And sometimes they go bad and somebody says, well, how do I know if I've got those in there? Well, you may not really know, but one thing you could do is jack up, chuck the wheels so that the car can't roll, chuck them up front, back and forth, and jack up a wheel on the rear end and grab hold of the spokes and pull the wheel back and forth in and out of the car. And if you don't have a thrust washer there, that thing's gonna move. There can also be other things wrong. You might have a loose axle on a gear. We've seen guys that are driving down the road and, and the axle and the wheel starts coming out of the car. That's not a good thing. So there's one good place to look a little bit and uh, you do that on the driver's side uh, so that actually if, you, if the thrust washer disintegrates on the driver's side, that's probably where there's the most stress because going the other way, uh, you're going to hit the ring gear and pinion before something happens there. But it, it can also, the thrust washer can be gone on the other side too. But you know, that's a good place to start. You don't want that wheel moving in and out of it, on you when you're going down the road. Yeah, here, here we are. The movement of an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch, and here's the, the thrust washer. This happens to be a brass one installed in there right now. This is a steel one. There's another steel one on the other side of it, and the same thing on the other side of the, of the axle over there. Like I say, that'll, that'll be a way that you can kind of assess what, what you've got. If you've got a problem there, you you may need to start uh, ahead of this. Again, this is kind of a, you know, one, two, three thing. If, if, if you start out and find that there's something broke here, you may need, you may be into fixing several things. You know, the, the ankle bone's connected to the leg bone, the leg bone's connected to the knee bone. It's all kind of connected as you're going through. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is remove the uh, rear wheels and examine the brakes and hub. And uh, you look on the wheels themselves and are the wheel nuts and bolts worn? One of the things that may happen like when you, if your axle is moving in and out, it may move in so far that it's gonna start chewing on the back end of the nuts 
and bolts that hold your wheel together, hold the hub on there. You might have some broken brake shoes uh, that you can find there, inside there. And we'll talk about that in a little while. You might find that the brake cams are worn and the bushings are worn on them and they kind of waller back and forth and, and aren't operating properly. And the, the brake, the bolt that holds the brakes on the backing plate opposite of the cam, you could have some wear on that. And maybe somebody left the cotter pin out of that and the nut fell off on the outside. There's a lot of things that can happen. Here we got a, here's an old junk rear axle that kind of shows some things that can happen over time. Here's one where the brake cam wore into the, to the backing plate. And this thing, it's kind of hard to see on this, but this is elongated. The hole is elongated here. And uh, you're not going to get a bolt to stay in there. And that hole is threaded to hold the boat, to hold the boat. Another thing you might find is a worn brake drum. Right here, there's a groove all the way around the thing where the brake shoe was wearing on this drum. I, I've got a 26-7 brake shoe that it's, it's clear through about halfway around. It's just hanging on it. And so I try not to put those in a car when I'm, when I'm restoring it. In fact, I had quite a time finding original brake drums uh, looking through my wheels that we're good enough to use. So we're going to talk about repairing the brake cam a, a little bit. Uh, many times uh, the brake cams are worn thin and uh, uh, bushing is shot in there and they just kind of wall around. The cam isn't as thick as it used to be uh, and the lever arm, the hole in the lever arm is worn out. I made a lot of mistakes in my life and one of them was I got the right and the left cam swapped in the car. And I thought, well, something's wrong here. And I needed to, uh, I put the car together and looked at my brake rods. Well, they're an inch and a half too long. I'll just cut them off. Yeah, so that wasn't a good ending. Yeah. So uh, you can drill and drive out whatever the rivets in the brake cam and press the, press the cam out of the lever, uh, press out the old bushing. We'll see how I do that here in a minute. And the brake clam lever uh, may need to be, the lever itself may need to be uh, repaired. I do some welding on that. I see Langs now is reproducing those. Uh, you, that one backing plate that had a groove in it and the hole bigger, I've gone in and done some uh, weld repair on that, re-drilled and, and threaded that. So, and you get it back together, uh, get the bushing pushed back in there, you can ream that out and install it, put some new rivets in there, and away you go, and that thing's all nice and ready to go. The best time to do that's when you're rebuilding the rear end. You can do it otherwise, but it's a little tough to get in there and do, do all of that stuff when it's under the car. Okay. So here's, some, here's what I'm talking about. Cams that are worn, this is all rusted here. You don't want to put that in the car. This is a pair of new cams, new reproduction. Here's some old ones. You can see they're a little smaller in general they're thinner. I mean, they've just worn out. Here's one that's got some wear on it. Here's a new one. And here's, some, here's one with some wear on it. The holes in the, you know, we could put new one of these arms on here, but there's some pretty decent holes there, but those are wallered out uh, when we had to drill the rivet out of there. Uh, you know, you might, what I do is I fill one side, put it on, put it on the new shaft, and then uh, like I say, I'll do one side and then put it on the shaft, the new shaft, drill through and uh, get, hit the other side so that I don't, you don't want to do them both at the same time. You'll lose your position of the, of the lever. Here's, the, here's a way to get the, the bushing out of here. Take a socket just a little smaller than the, 
than the bushing and put a socket a little bigger than the bushing there. And your, my wife's just dying to come out and help me. But maybe, you know, maybe your wife's, or, or actually it's Kimberly, she'll come out and help. And we put the sockets on there, lift that up in a vise and just tighten it up. And that'll push that, that socket will push the bushing out of there. The early bushings were brass, a brass base, and the later ones were steel. Not that it makes it, when it gets all together, I can't tell the difference, so I just stuck what it's, just stick whatever I got in there generally. And then once you get that in there and you slip the new cam in there, you can ream it out with a reamer. Here's where I've repaired where it had worn in the backing plate. There's where it had worn where the threads had gone. Kind of shows, you know, the repair there uh, as it's going back together. And like I say, that's a lot easier to do when the rear end's off being rebuilt. There's been several styles of the brake brakes made over the years. The original, I think, was a one-piece cast cast <coughs> iron shoe. And uh, I've seen one-piece cast iron shoes with lining. I think that's what's available right now. And uh, I've seen, I've got a set of two-piece cast iron shoes that have lining on them. I've seen two-piece cast iron with no lining and then with lining. And uh, uh, then there's also a one-piece type that's made out of strap iron that was apparently an accessory. And I've got a couple sets of those. I know the 15 had them when we uh, bought the car years ago. Uh, original style brake, I can't tell you that that is an original. I'm guessing it's probably a reproduction. I don't know. Uh, I just got it out of my pile. And then here's ones, this is similar. In fact, this is out of Lang's catalog. Um, I hope it's all right to use that. But anyway, uh, there it shows the lining on it. On, and it looks like kind of like the cast iron drums, but it, what happens oh, on some of them, there's a little dip right here, and then the lining went on. They may have redesigned and resized this. And I noticed there's like reinforcements on this a little bit too. <coughs> and then the next one, here's, here's the two-piece shoe. These are brand new, and they're very similar to what we see in it at lines there, but this one has a little dip in it right here where the lining goes. Well, like I say, they've experimented around, around a lot of times uh, with different shoes. And then here's the strap, strap iron shoe. And one thing I thought was kind of interesting about this was it only has one spring. There's no spring over here. And the other thought was, so there's, your, on your cast iron, they got a spring on up there and down here, but it's one piece. And uh, I kind of think that's because they tend to break. And if they break just right, which they a lot of times will break around the hole where it's bolted on, then you've got a two-piece shoe and you can still keep going. Talk a little bit about the metal scraping when... when uh, and Bob Shin and his 14, he's working through that right now. He's got a wheel and it's scraping along. And so we've been looking to see what, what's going on there. And uh, he uh, bought some one-piece shoes that were cast and uh, thought that they were new old stock. Not sure if they were or not. Uh, but anyway, one side is really dragging at, on, on the bottom the bottom of the shoe. Uh, the top side seemed to be all right. So like if you're looking and you see that wear on the drum on the inside, that could indicate that there's a problem with inside the rear end and it's going in too far and scraping on your drum. You need to fix that problem. But if you've got a problem with the other one way, you can kind of fix that stuff and open it up a little bit is to, there's some shims that are made, some stainless shims and you can put on your taper and, and move the uh, hub out a little bit. But I bought some new axles uh, here a while back, brand new made rear axles, and they're an eighth inch longer than 
the originals were. And uh, what they said was, if you put the Rocky Mountain brakes on, you're gonna stick another drum on the back of the original small drum that spaces it out a little bit there. So if they added an eighth of an inch to the axle, you're, you're good to go on that, which I thought was kind of ingenious. Uh, another thing you might find is that the hub bolts, if you had new wheels made, maybe the hub bolts are too long and they're rubbing on something on the inside, the hub bolts on your wheel. This is uh, the emergency brake retaining bolt, and it's a fine thread bolt. You can buy those down at the hardware store. You know, well, there's a bolt, I'll just go down to the hardware store and get me a new one. It ain't rusted. Well, a lot of times when you buy a new bolt, they're threaded all the way down to the head. You don't want to do that. You want to have a straight shank there where the, where the shoe sets on it. That'll add a little extra wear that you don't need. The head of those bolts is a little bit thinner. And when you look at the shoes, there's a little depression there that that head fits in to try and get it away from the hub so you're not scraping on the hub. So there's a front and a back to the shoes when it comes right down to it. When you put this on, I assemble it up just a tad bit loose. You're not looking to crank down on that bolt and make that tight. It's a hinge point. It needs to be able to move a little bit there. And then don't forget to put your castle nut back on there and a cotter pin through it. This is a two different kinds of brake springs. The long one here is a 26-7, and the short one over here is for the earlier cars. So we got this all done. We got the car ready to go. We got our springs on here, and here's our bolt. We're, we're, the bolt head is down below the brake shoe. This is a cast shoe. There's no lining on it. Over here we got the new brake cam in here, and uh, we put this on here. Uh, we're ready to slide the wheel on and turn it over and see if it's going to see if it's going to work. Let's say you get it on there and it starts scraping a little bit. The new shoes may need to be sized before they install on the car. First thing to do is be sure and check that they'll go inside the drum. <coughs> if they're not too big. Uh, over, over time, there's been a lot of parts made, and some of them flat just don't fit. And it might be that they wouldn't even go in the hub. So be sure they go in the hub. This one fits, it's broke right here. <laughs> and it allowed it to move a little bit. I think it would have fit with it being broke. But there's a, the, this, the uh, cam in there, and I've turned it a little bit, and that's kind of to simulate this being in the car, and you've operated that lever, the brake cam lever that's tied to your emergency brake lever, and it's rotated. It rotates about, from what I can tell, about 40, 35 to 45 degrees when it's working. Now that's where I'd like to see what the Ford Archives, what it was designed to be, because I've never seen anything that said what that was. Uh, so the narrowest part of the brake cam measured on the ones I had had 400 thousandths and if you turned it 90 degrees and measured it the widest part it was 0.875 so there's <coughs> quite a, a bit of difference there. This is another shoe and what I did on this Here's the cam in here, and I don't. I hope you can see it well enough, but the cam isn't this way, it's this way. And the shoe still isn't set. So something's worn out. I think it's probably this outer diameter of the shoe. Uh, from what I'm, it was very thin. Just looking at it, uh, when I was messing with it, it was just very thin. I think the shoe's just flat worn out. It's been on the car too long. I've done a lot of dumb things in my life. I've probably got a lot more to do, I hope. Uh, but it was on a tour, oh gosh, back in the mid 70s or so. And I had the wheel off of the car and I pulled the brake lever back. And you don't want to do that. So, some of you are laughing. I think you probably had the same problems. Guess what happened? 
broke the shoe. Well, that's kind of revolting. Now I really don't have a break on that side. I, I found somebody and took the two pieces and braced it back together for the tour. Uh, in fact, that's the way it is today yet on that car. This is trying to explain a little bit about the travel of this, of this little lever at the back. If you can kind of see here, I don't have this level. It's cocked back just a little bit. And what that's saying is that when you, uh, when you have the brakes off, you can probably pull this back a little bit and it's not going to move the shoe much of any. So you gain a, just a little bit of travel with it, maybe another three to five degrees. And then when you throw the emergency brake lever on, it's probably going to be at about a 45 degree angle. This is just my thoughts. And again, I'd like to see the original Ford drawings and the design of it to, to know what, uh, what they were really up to. So let's go up to the front now and move up to the uh, front of, towards the front of the car. Okay, so we're up to the brake cross shaft. You inspect that and be sure the, the bracket underneath the frame is not worn out, your shaft isn't worn out. Oh, it's kind of interesting. This hole here is an oil hole and there's a hole beneath it that has a leather, uh, uh, not leather, a uh, felt in there, and that's a place you're supposed to oil on your car, and that oils that shaft. Uh, I guess, you know, we can speculate about things that happen, but uh, I don't think we'll oil our cars enough. I don't think we go around and squirt spring bushings and all that kind of stuff enough, because uh, Oil helps maybe kind of flush the stuff out of the, that's in there, the dirt and that that's in there. And uh, that's one place, it's a good place to oil. When you start working on your Model T, maybe you bought it like I do, I'm not, I can't afford a complete car, I have to build it from parts. So I find the frame out in the, in the weeds and it's been rolled over and the brake cam's been bent all up and things are bad so Heat that thing up and straighten it out. You can get it all straightened out. I think originally it's probably a forging, uh, but you heat that up and watch it. It's not breaking as you straighten it back out. Then the next thing to look for is this little pole that rides on the ratchet here. A lot of times the pole's worn out or it has a little dish like this where it's run across this uh, ratchet. So the other thing to do is check the condition of this return spring uh, and replace that if necessary so that little handle slips back when, it's, uh, when you let go of it. So that's a little bit of something about rebuilding the brake lever. I've unriveted these and rebuilt them, refiled them and everything and put them back together. It's kind of a chore, but, uh, or, Back at that time, you couldn't really find a, a reproduction of them. Yeah, you put the brake rods on the car, you're sitting there, and you're going to move this brake shaft, emergency brake lever, uh, out of the neutral position, which is straight up and down with both rear wheels, uh, without the rear wheels installed, and you pull that lever back or you push it forward, you're going to break the brake shoes. This is a little bit... I looked in the Ford manuals, uh, probably like that black one that was up here that we got given away, and it, there's a bunch of uh, stuff in there about adjusting for the free neutral and adjusting your brakes and adjusting this clutch uh, lever, the speed lever, and uh, your slow speed connection set, this little deal right here. And I read and read and read and read that. And, uh, you know, trying to comprehend what was going on. And I finally, I think, got it figured out. There's, there's two things that's going to happen with that. Emergency brake uh, lever all the way back. The car's in uh, neutral. 
and the emergency brake is on. When you're moving this thing back and forth here, if you're on this, if your bolt is touching this part of the cam right here, it's shoving, it's turning this uh, lever here so that the car is in neutral. All right, and then when you shove it all the way forward, push the brake all the way forward, it drops off the end here, and then it's, this is not in the play anymore. Okay. All the way forward, and it's in high, and that bolt should have fallen off of that, uh, the uh, speed lever, the little cam on the, on the uh, brake cross shaft. So let's go to the next picture, and I hope you can see it here. You know, if this chassis could be white or something, maybe we could see a little better, but yeah. So here's a, here's the brake lever and it's pulled back and there's the, the speed lever and the, there's the bolt on top of that. It, with that bolt adjusted the way it's supposed to be and we'll get to that in a minute. This will be in neutral. Then we're gonna push the pedal forward, or not the pedal, but the lever forward towards straight up and down. And we're still in neutral, but we've released the brakes and we're still on the cam here. Then we shove the thing clear forward and the, the bolt fell off of the cam and now we're, we're in high gear. If, we don't, if we're not pushing any of these pedals with this configuration like this, we're traveling down the road now, we're in high gear. So the clutch pedal does three things. I think most Model T owners have figured that out. It engages the low speed gear when you're all the way down and it the second thing it does is use, you push it halfway down and you're in neutral. And third, if you take your foot clear off of it, it goes into high. And that's what that mechanism down there on the side, those levers and that and the, uh, is doing for you is, is helping you with those positions. The first thing we, it talks about in the book to do is to adjust this speed linkage here. You want this so that it's aligned. And a lot of times you'll get this transmission cover or the engine or whatever and it's been out of the car uh, and it rolls around on the ground on the concrete or whatever and somebody's bent this lever and no longer does it hit this cam down here or they've got this thing installed 180 so you can see it would be going off this way so you can look to see if everything's installed right and see that it's all in line and when you operate the clutch and when you operate the brake level lever, everything's going to be in line. So we're going to adjust the slow speed linkage and you pull the clutch uh, pedal, you reach up and you pull the clutch pedal back as far as it'll go and set the emergency brake lever as far forward as it'll go. and. Uh, you want the, the screw on that lever not to be touching the speed lever at this point. And what you are supposed to do, and we're going to see in the, in the next picture that I tried to draw, is you want to have uh, a 60, the speed, slow speed connector to be a 16th inch shorter than the corresponding links between the holes in the clutch pedal and the clutch lever. Your clutch, this bolt is not touching this. So you, otherwise the lever, your brake lever is gonna be all the way forward because that's when it doesn't touch this. Then you pull the clutch pedal, take your hand, pull the top of that clutch pedal all the way back and you measure this distance center to center here and whatever that is, you make your uh, slow speed connection set here that, put, that puts in, goes in there with this pin and your, and your uh, clevis pin that goes in there, it needs to be a sixteenth of an inch shorter than this distance. And they're doing that, so I think, so that you don't walk something up. That means you're always going to have a little bit of travel. So I'm out there playing with mine, and the thing I can tell you is look for where in this or these holes because mine just 
flops around in there. They, they're, it was, it's worn out. I checked two of my cars and they're that way. So you loosen the nut on the clutch lever screw. So otherwise that screw on the lever there, you loosen that up, loosen the nut, get it towards it's loose. Then you pull the handbrake back as far as it'll go and you adjust the clutch lever screw until the clutch pedal is in the neutral position. Uh, the, the, clutch, uh, the clutch pedal should move forward one and three quarter inch from the point where the clutch pedal is completely released to the point where the transmission is in neutral. Uh, that's after the clutch lever is uh, screw, move the clutch lever screw in or out until you obtain a one and three quarter inch and a, trans, uh, and a transmission is neutral. Once the one and three quarter inch is obtained, and we're gonna show a picture of this in a minute, uh, tighten down the clutch lever screw after the just was main, maintain, or made, the handbrake lever is moved completely forward and check to be that the, uh, be sure that the clutch lever screw, otherwise the screw is going to drop off of that cam. It's not going to touch anything when you're done adjusting. Pull this lever back and measure from the pedal, to, let's say to the firewall here, and I think we got eight and eight and a quarter inch dimension. Uh, with the, the brake lever pulled clear back. And then with the brake lever clear forward, which means that it, uh, it should be in neutral now, and here's the screw off of the, it, it's off of the cam, and take another measurement, this one's 10 inches. We had eight and a quarter, and now it's 10 inches. So you take the difference of that, and you've got one and three quarter inch. And that's, that is what the book says you're supposed to have uh, as a desired dimension. And if you don't, if something's wrong there, like I say, I'd start looking for worn out holes. Uh, like they were saying earlier about these shafts being worn. Uh, that's when I, I was sitting there thinking about people that go in there and put uh, they put seals on the outside of here to keep it from leaking, put seals in there. It's like, I don't know. That's how that got oiled. And, you know, other than that, there's, that's, that's probably good for it, get a little oil flow, flowing through there now and then. Yes, it is worn out. And uh, you may need to dress, uh, putting a bushing in there or something. But uh, anyway, that is the second adjustment they talk about in the Ford manual. Supposedly now we got our we got our brakes adjusted so here we go we're full back we come up on here we the transmission went into neutral we're back where we need to be the brakes are set and we move it forward uh, we're still in neutral here but we've released the brakes we move it clear forward the transmission went into gear when we fall off this and the, the brakes should be yet in neutral. There's a difference between 26 and seven brake rods and the earlier style. The 26, seven brake rods are straight. The earlier style has a dog leg that goes over the radio, the rear radius rods. You can check on your brake rods and stuff uh, to be sure that the clevises on the end aren't worn and the threads are good and the, Clevis, there's one end that's adjustable that'll move in and out, and that it has a lock nut on there, so when you're done, you can lock that clevis to the shaft, because the shaft is threaded on one end, and you want a lock nut on there. You don't want the thing up there. As it's going down the road, it's a rattling away, and that rattling will cause wear, and pretty soon, your threads will be worn out in that bracket in the, in the clevis. And I usually install new clevis pins when I'm doing that job. Okay, so here's your little, this is the anti-rattle deal right here. And yeah, it'll rattle without them. Uh, and again, it's up there flopping up and around going down the road and that just wears your bushings and that out on the end as, as you're driving down the road. You've got it all adjusted. You install the rear brakes, attach the brake rods and the brake print and all that. Pull on the brakes to see if the wheels lock up. Adjust the brake rod clevises as you need so that both sides match. And go for a test drive and reattach 
if needed. This is, like I say, this could still be in neutral because we really haven't raised these brake shoes that much. And uh, like I say, you're not going to exactly see what's in there when, when you turn, when you put it all together because you need to have it together or you're going to break that shoe. I guess, what do you do to adjust the brakes? If everything was, you know, maybe built, built to factory specs, as I can imagine, they're putting out cars that however many they put thousand a day or whatever it was, and they didn't take time to adjust each one of these and grind the brakes and grind the brake cam and adjust the rod and all this kind of stuff. I'm thinking it was probably all done and probably didn't, maybe, maybe it could have been adjusted a little better when it, when they got done. But they probably had some kind of tolerance, they had some kind of assembly deal, maybe they assembled the rods to a certain length, and you know, they'd already been through the rear end and known that the holes were drilled and tapped and all that and uh, in the right place, and you know I, know, I don't know, like I say, it'd be fun to go back there and do some research and see. This is kind of the backside, shows the lever here, <laughs> and I got this, and doubtly etched into my mind that this this is neutral this in this area right here it's not this way because that meant I had the cams in backwards <laughs> okay so this is kind of showing the bottom of the shoes where they're where they're rubbing on his car the top isn't isn't rubbing so that kind of give you the idea of what the what the problem was and then here's the Mating. These are brand new drums. Uh, they were powder coated, and uh, it's kind of interesting that it scraped the powder coating off. They're just just running, just moving it around in the driveway. He hadn't started the car yet from uh, being restored. Okay, so we're going to uh, talk about one more thing, and that's a slipping clutch. If you adjust everything up and everything's supposed to be the way it is, one thing that can happen is your clutch fingers here can be adjusted to where your clutch is too tight or maybe it's too loose. And what the book says is you pull these cotter pins out, there's three of them around here, you pull them out one at a time and turn the screw one half turn, put the cotter pin back in and go to the next one then and then go for a test drive and see how that works. Here's another thing that uh, is, is very common on a Model T. When you put brake bands on your car, this is right. This is wrong. You, you put both of them about this distance. Just let it overhang about an eighth of an inch. The idea being so that the brake band doesn't grab into the drum. And then you take, you rivet, you rivet it up here, and you rivet it over here, and then you push that lining, just push it down into the brake shoe, or the uh, bands, and it'll all compress and be just right. The, the problem with this is, if you, you start here and you just go around and it ends up like this, as you go from rivet to rivet, it's, it might be straight as opposed to a curve. And uh, that's the way my dad taught me to do that. And I don't know how he figured it out, but uh, that's why I've done it forever. And, and I've had other brake bands off and seen where the transmission lining would go straight and wasn't uh, uptight against the bands. Stuff you some rags or something down there and then don't forget to pull the rag out when you're done. Uh, that key, if something falls down in there, you want it to fall into that rag so you can reach it out, re pull it out right away and get it. So if the car creeps forward while in neutral and every everything else is properly adjusted and the car wants to creep forward, it uh, could be the clutch band is too tight. And if that's the case, you simply back off the nut on your, uh, well, you loosen the nut on the clutch and unscrew that screw on the side of the transmission, which is the other side of the clutch pedal. And likewise, you don't want the brake and reverse too tight. 
and uh, dragging on the drums. When you go out for your test drive the first time, I'd have them kind of loose. I'd stay, I wouldn't get out on the main road if that's your first time driving a car, your car, uh, with a complete, you know, new restoration. I'd do a little testing first to be sure you had it right. And if you don't, you can jump out, pull that transmission cover off and give that nut on the band another little uh, keep in mind when you're going down the road in high gear the transmission is not doing anything but revolving as a unit uh, the clutch plates will not be rotating past each other they they're up tight so when the transmission is in high gear the engine is hard coupled to the drive shaft so i guess maybe that's what that's saying is don't don't blame the transmission for everything i mean when it's when you're in high gear, the transmission really ought to be out of the picture. There may be something there that's causing you problems on the transmission, but uh, that's kind of neat. You know, it's, it's always a marvel to me. This was a kind of forerunner of an automatic transmission. And, you know, if you think of this, it was designed in the late aughts. I mean, these guys were sharp. The guy that designed this, I don't remember. I think I've read several times who did it. But he was no dummy. I mean, this is, a, this is an automatic transmission. You just got to manually shift it, kind of. I'm, we're talking here about your standard brakes and an emergency brake. And I'm not sure that that's, I don't think that's adequate anymore myself. And I'm putting a set of Rocky Mountain brakes on a car, first set I've ever put on a car. I hate to do it. I like my cars to be kind of original. But, uh, these little cars now, you're driving down the road and they zip around you and set the brakes right in front of you at a stop sign or stoplight or something. And I don't want to rear end anybody. Uh, maybe as I get older, I get a little slower to react on some things. I hope not, I don't want to. But, uh, and the other thing I think of is you got this brake band there. And that's your service brake. And it's that wide, that big around, and it's running oil. And you're going to expect that slippery thing to stop you. So you need, you know, all the thought you can. If you're, if you're in a panic situation, and I had a, I'm not a Ruxtel guy. I don't, I don't have a Ruxtel in any car right now. But I had one, and it jumped out of gear. I don't have any coupling between that transmission band and my rear end. And I pulled back on the emergency brake. And I heard a lot of scraping and carrying on, and I got her stopped. It was not fun. So, uh, like I say, this is, I like to get what I'm supposed to have working, and then I'll worry about adding other stuff to it at some time. So, I got one, got one more slide. A couple of good references is the Model T uh, transmission book that I think Fred Houston. Maybe he was part of that. Maybe you were too. Okay. okay. And then the Model T Ford service manual. And I'm sure Mike has, uh, Bender has some videos online about adjusting some of that and some of the other guys. But uh, there's a lot of good stuff. It just take your time and read it and figure out what it says. Uh, and that's really all I was trying to do today was read that for you and tell you what I think it said about the adjustments on it. So that's all I got. What's your fix for a uh, one that's really grooved really bad? I've, I've run across some in the past that's really grooved out. You mean on that cam? Well, yeah, on on the, the, yeah, on the, on the handbrake cam. It travels underneath. The clutch, where below your adjustment screw, when those are really, really bad, how do you fix that? You don't no, never weld out. one out and and uh, grind it back down. The early ones were cast. The later ones were, I think, were cast steel. Right. The later ones were uh, steel. I guess you could try and weld that up and you know grind it back yeah. down. But it to me, it'd be easier just to find another one on most of those. Well, what we have done. And I don't necessarily recommend it, but it works good. Was to take the whole bolt out and smooth off around the edges, put the bolt in upside down, the lock nut on top, 
and then you have more bolt that covers that shoe and covers that uh, area it's worn. Yeah, that I think that might work. I noticed on Bob's car when when the bolt came off of the cam, there's not a lot of distance there. Right. It's real tight. Yeah, I don't think the head of the bolt, yeah, but it's real close there. All well, right. we've, we've watched that, and yeah, that, that is a consideration. Yeah. But uh, we, that's what we've done, it's work. Yeah. Any other questions? Hey, Vern, can you go back to your slide showing everything assembled with the wheel off? Yeah, that one. I think somewhere I have experienced, you know, you showed all your different combinations of brake shoes over the years, that the springs can, depending upon how they're installed, rub against the back of the hub I'm or the hub you. bolts, and you get going back to your dragging noises. I I'm glad you mentioned that. That's something I forgot to mention. I told you I was going to, and then I forgot all about it. When you put this spring on here, turn it around. Put the hook this way, not this way. When, when you break this shoe, uh, it's going to fold that way. If you broke, if the shoe broke here, and you have it like this, the shoe's going to come out at you, and I think that's when you groove the drum. Thank you for bringing that up. That's the thing I forgot to say. Is I, I've got mine to where they're, they're a little harder to get on that way. Take a vice grip, clap onto that, pull it up, and hook it on there. And same way on that end, too, so that the brake folds against the backing plate. Other questions? Um, I grew up on a farm and we always stopped our John Deere's and we uh, put them in neutral and we always pushed the clutch in so we didn't have the uh, uh, throw out bearing and stuff under load and whenever we stopped them at night we always made sure the clutch was engaged. Now with Model T, do you park Model T with emergency brake on? If you do, you're compressing that spring. Yeah. How many guys do that? With the emergency brake forward? Is that what you're saying? I usually just pull mine back. Well, I, I, that's a question I have. Is that the best way to do it? You're, you're compressing that spring that, that engages your clutch. Yeah. I've never had any problems okay. with that. But uh, you mentioned that brings up another thought uh, a lot of guys I know will when they start their car and I'm talking about people that haven't been around a Model T they say well I can't get it started you just won't turn and the old timers back in the old days that worked uh, that lived at that time they knew what to do you jacked up that rear wheel and put your lever up to neutral and you chalked your wheel in the front, you wound that puppy up, and, and then you went in, in the uh, cab there, sat in the seat, and you start playing the clutch pedal and the brake pedal and all that and get that oil <coughs> moving up in the disc. And one, pretty soon then, you can, well, you put your clutch halfway in, and uh, you want to be sure your clutch is halfway in, and you step on your brake, keep pumping it. And the first time you pump it, you might kill the engine. That's when you figure out that I pumped it too much. Don't pump it that much again because the older you get, the harder it is to get in and out of the car and start the car five or six times, okay? So, you know, keep, keep playing that brake pedal and pretty soon you can hold the brake pedal down and the engine's still running. Then you pull the brake, the emergency brake lever back and then you can get out and jack that hind wheel down. And I don't think a lot of, of the new people in the Model Ts have been exposed to that and have, have heard about that. I, I noticed things on the forum like that. And it, first off, it kind of like, what? You know, and then it dawns on me, well, that's what the problem is. They haven't figured out that that's just the nature of the beast. 
However, with like turbo 400 clutches and the transmission, you don't have to, you know, I find you don't have to do that so much with those. They're, they're loose. We can push her 14 all over the place, but with the original steel disc and it being cold, you're going to have a hard time pushing it when it's cold. Hello. Um, maybe everyone already knows this, but <clears throat> when you take the rear wheels off and there's like a felt seal, I've been spinning off oil. Some people say, oh, well, they leak there. That's what it does. Some people say, oh, you need to do something else. Is there kind of a modern permanent fix to seal that? You're talking that axle bearing? Yeah, in the yeah. rear end when you take the wheels off. Well, that, there it is. Yeah. This, this is a modern, which I've never seen this one before. It's not to say it's good or bad, uh, just because I haven't seen it. But uh, they made several of them, and it has a lip seal in there, probably, as opposed to that felt. And uh, there's some of those have, around this outside here, have some O-rings there that try and keep the dirt grease inside there and whatnot but it helps it keeps your rear wheels from getting full of grease and that that's leaking out that rear end the the bad thing about it about this is if you've got an original rear end and i put some together that i thought i had really nice bearings and really nice axles in that uh nice bearings that were half inch diameter rollers 0 0.500 and the sleeve in there was no wear i'll tell you what there was still a little bit of wear because that axle will do this and it'll knock that lip seal out of there right quick uh, but i don't use the felts anymore uh, in, fa in fact i make some of my own i machine some of my like own. a neoprene or something there's yeah something there's behind. just a neoprene seal that presses in there and I've got a, a little brass ring that is uh, abrased into that cup and then machine that all down. The brass kind of, the brass ring, the bronze ring runs on the end of the bearing and uh, kind of keeps it, you know, rather than having that uh, cup and the felt and another washer in there. To me, if the things go south on you, you got that washer wanting to slice off your axle. And that's what kind of bothered me a little bit was that washer's generally pretty stiff. I was wondering if you've uh, ever found in putting on new uh, brake linings on your shoes, are you finding them too thick and having to sand them down? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Quite I, common, is it? Yeah. This day and age? Uh, yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I wish I could find the drawings of that and know what that's supposed to be. I'm not sure anybody looked at the original drawings when, when we were making shoes. And I mean, I've got shoes, new brake shoes that are 50 years old that were new, newly made back 50 years ago. And uh, they just don't, you're gonna have to do some work to get them to fit. Oh, another thing I kind of should have mentioned I noticed the linings on, on some of them, uh, some of the other ones we had pictures of, you know, it looks like a composition lining. Those ones that were strap, made out of strap iron, have a woven lining in them. And I, I've noticed that some of these new shoes have a composition lining, but they're somewhat softer than the old, than like what a disc brake has. Disc brake. That, man, that thing's hard. You know, you can't, you can't stick your fingernail in that or your thumbnail. But I noticed some of these newer compositions are softer. And I, I say, I don't know. I, I would like to see them have that woven lining on there. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wishing for the wrong thing. And again, like you're, you know, with oil and grease, lack uh, dripping out of there and soak up your linings, that's not good. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, thank you again, Vern and Kimberly. Oh.
Kimberly. Kimberly, Kimberly did the video, uh, the shots here. She put that together for me, so that was her part of it. <laughs> That's it. Thank you all very much for coming. Safe travels home and uh, appreciate it. Hope, hope to see you again next year, if not sooner. Thank, Thank you. you. Like 80s Irish Rose, Henry's maid lady, Aunt Lizzie. The Chevrolet said with regret, to the whippet, we're both wet. Henry's maid lady, Aunt Lizzie. Like 80s Irish Rose, Henry's maid lady, Aunt Lizzie. The Chevrolet said with regret to the whippet, we're both wet. Henry's made a lady out of Lizzie.